Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to the webinar, Modernizing Forest Activity Notifications and Compliance Tracking with ODF. My name is Bonnie, and I will be your moderator for today's session. This session will be provided via both audio and web conference. Today's session is being recorded, and all participant lines will be muted during the session. This program will last approximately 30 minutes and will include a specific question and answer opportunity at the end of the program. If you have a question at any point during today's presentation, you may submit it via the questions box located in the GoToWebinar toolbox on your screen. Our speakers for today are Lowell Ballard from Timmins Group and Lena Tucker from the Oregon Department of Forestry. This discussion will highlight FERNS, a web-based notification and mobile inspection system developed to streamline internal processes for reporting and tracking forest activity. Lowell and Lena will discuss how the tool allows ODF to better manage Oregon's forests and increase efficiency within the organization. And now it is my pleasure to introduce Lowell and Lena. Lowell, please go ahead. Thanks, Bonnie, for the introduction. Um, and thanks, everybody, for hopping on the, the webinar. Um, so uh, just a little heads up that we are, um, we do have people in Oregon who are helping with the presentation and people in Virginia. So um, we're going to be advancing the slides from one of those locations. So if there's a little bit of a lag or disconnect in the, the slides keeping up with the speakers, it's because we're doing it from multiple locations. Um, uh, so we're going to start with a couple um, uh, introductions about the organizations involved in the project and um, what we are and, and, and um, how we uh, how we were played a critical part in this project. Um, I also want to apologize that I've got a cold, so I I sound a little bit um, a little bit rough. So I uh, appreciate you understanding the sort of vocal challenges we're going through. Um, so Timmins Group, we work all across the country. Uh, we do a lot of work with um, forestry, fisheries, wildlife. Um, sort of my background and and the group of about a hundred people I run. Um, a lot of them have backgrounds in, um, you know, forestry, fisheries, environmental work, and um, spatial management. Uh, we do a lot of work with wildfire, spatial comps tracking, uh, cost share tracking, web and mobile, obviously. Um, and we pretty much design, build, host, support, all, all aspects of uh, projects like this. Um, we do focus a lot on organizations like ODF, so um, Oregon Department of Forestry. Um, is, is sort of a, a typical client for us, a state agency that, that deals with natural resources. And these are, you know, not a full representation of the people we work with. But, um, you know, we're very passionate about providing solutions for organizations like this and streamlining the way that they do work and becoming more efficient. And um, I would consider this project to be an outstanding example of um, uh, that type of work. Um, with that, I'm going to pass it over to um, Lena with ODF and explain a little bit about the important mission of Oregon Department of Forestry and uh, sort of who they are and who they work with. Thanks, Lowell. This is Lena Tucker, and I'm the Division Chief for the Private Forest Division with the Oregon Department of Forestry. And a little bit about who we are and the mission for our private forest program. Our mission is to maintain working forest and the social, economic, and ecological viability of those forests into the future. We carry out this purpose through effective administration, educational assistance, and enforcement of the Oregon Forest Practices Act. We also monitor and work to improve forest health. We deliver state and federal incentive programs to family forest landowners and we also provide urban forestry services. Our objective is to provide effective administration, educational assistance, and enforcement of Oregon's Forest Practices Act, which is a resource protection cornerstone. It requires post-harvest restoration and scientifically supported measures like streamside buffers and forestry best management practices. The Forest Practices Act encourages private forest land investment through a consistent regulatory environment, and it underwrites a social contract assuring responsibly managed forests. Our private forest stewardship foresters, the landowners, and the loggers all work together to protect natural resources. And to achieve this, our foresters, who are the boots on the ground out there, they work to educate and give technical advice to customers to help them achieve their forest management goals. They enforce civil and other penalties when necessary. They inspect before, during, and after priority forest operations. And they conduct compliance audits and research to measure the effectiveness of Oregon's Forest Practices Act. Thanks, Alina. Um, so a little bit of um, uh, how the, how the uh, 
um, presentation is going to flow. Uh, we're basically going to go through and sort of talk about the business problem and, and the challenge that Oregon Department of Forestry was facing um, and sort of why they took on this initiative. Um, then we're going to talk about what was done. So what are the products? What are the deliverables that came out of the, the web, the mobile, the technology solutions? Um, you know, how did it change? Um, the, the way that Oregon used to do business in working with um, private landowners and industrial um, entities that they deal with. Um, we're also going to talk because we feel it's very important to sort of share this information with folks who might be looking at doing a project like this or in the middle of it or thinking about it. Um, just a little bit about how we worked as a team to deliver on a very um, complicated project that involved um, a lot of different stakeholders, a lot of different moving parts and technology and integration places. Um, so we're going to talk a little bit about that, and then we'll kind of close out with benefits, lessons learned, and sort of retrospective as a team um, on things that we might help you as you um, you venture through um, a journey like this. So with that, I'm going to pass it back over to Lena um, to talk a little bit about sort of the business problem and the sort of story behind this project. Thanks, Will. So a little bit of the background of why we initiated this project, and it really all started during the 2011 Oregon legislative session. The legislature and forest industry really expressed concern that the Department of Forestry's administration of the Forest Practices Act had fallen behind technological and industry advances, which affected cost savings and efficiency. Therefore, we were directed to work with our customers and our stakeholders to identify business processes that could be streamlined, possibly automated, and thus increase efficiency and effectiveness both internally and for our customers. So overall, why change? Why did we need to do this? Historically, we utilized a paper-based process in which forest operators, landowners, timber owners were required to provide the state forester with a notification of operation and also receive an application for permit to use fire or operate power driven machinery for a large range of forest operations. And this is all in accordance with Oregon's forest practices rules. So the paper-based process, it was time consuming. It had many redundancies. We've been doing it for 30 odd years. It was prone to error. And it was, frankly, frustrating to our customers and ourselves. So overall, the kind of the moral of the story is that we made a dedicated investment in e-notification, which moved ODF, basically, from the paper-based process to a fully automated enterprise-based technical solution. And it all started from a conversation on, do we need to change? Why should we change? And if so, what does that change look like? And this slide has a few builds in it that we'll get through that kind of goes through the different story. And if we look at kind of uh, chapter one of the story, noting that we have a problem. So by law, our private landowners who harvest timber, conduct road construction, use fire on the landscape, or do other forestry-related activities, they have to notify the state forester where the operation is located and what type of operation is being conducted. And so we use this information to monitor forestry operations and enforce Oregon's forest practices laws to protect natural resources and the environment. The information historically was submitted on paper form. And they basically had to be manually entered into ODF databases. And the maps of the operation boundaries were digitized by our staff into ODF's geographic information system, the many different components of processing the work. The manual process caused delays in our ability to respond to our customers when they had questions or when they were proceeding to file their notifications with us. Lowell will talk a little bit about the conflict here with the paper-based form. Thanks, Lena. <clears throat> Sorry, we had a little slide snafu there for a minute. It kind of lagged out on me, so apologies for that. Um, but it finally caught up. Um, 
So there was a conflict in that, um, obviously, if you're looking to, you know, keep landowners happy, industrial loggers and, and other constituents and stakeholders happy, um, I think we would all agree that, um, you know, the goals of the project, you know, come in direct conflict with, you know, using paper forms. Um, you know, it, 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 there's not a lot of transparency. There's not a lot of insight into where things are in the process. Um, and, and they're sort of ripe for error. So if you look at, you know, some of these sample forms, um, you know, there's a lot of shot at, at data integrity problems. You know, you can look at things that are written down on the paper forms. All of these things have to be, um, you know, transcribed back into some sort of system. There's likely going to be, um, you know, errors in what's put in there. Uh, there's going to be lags in, in terms of efficiency and moving data through the system. Um, and and it, it, it's very difficult to sort of report outcomes and report accomplishments and really, um, you know, tell a good story about where you are in the process. And, um, um, you know, really create that streamlined experience that the, the loggers and the landowners were looking for. Um, Lena explained a little bit about sort of chapter two and, and sort of this e-notification concept that, that happened. And then I'm going to jump back in and talk about the, the GIS side. So we all decided we needed to fix this. Customers, staff, both agree that we needed to modernize. And so the investment in what we call e-notification, affectionately known as ferns because foresters like to name things, we moved ODF out of the paper-based process to a fully automated enterprise-based technical solution. And Lola gives some examples of the different displays and the techniques. Thanks, Lena. Um, so for this project, we, um, we went with what I would call sort of a, a relatively map-centric approach, which is not the approach that we always take. In a lot of cases, we sort of start off with a tabular workflow. You will notice up on the top, there's sort of um, um, a breadcrumb. We're, we're on the map tab now. There is a, a step um, before this one where you provide some, some basic information um, about the, um, the application that's going to happen on the ground. Um, but, but we wanted to start with people sort of getting grounded and telling us where on the ground that they were going to do something. Um, you know, and again, we're dealing with different stakeholders. So we have, we have private landowners, we have industrial users, um, we have different, different stakeholders that are uh, going to be involved um, in, this, in this project. Um, the other thing that you'll notice is in, in dealing with industrial um, stakeholders, you can see at the bottom where it says draw the unit or basically where you're going to be doing the work on the ground or the disturbance or activity on the ground. Um, and there's also import unit. One of the things that we learned early on in the project was that people have existing systems. They're already managing shape files and they're already managing, you know, spatial data. And we wanted to provide an easy way for them to, um, to be able to input their data so they can literally um, take a shape out of their GIS and they can, um, use a tool that we built and it can automatically put it inside of this application. So, you know, the last thing we wanted to do was create work for them and double entry and, you know, for those power users that, that are, you know, important stakeholders in this process, we wanted to give them a really easy way to get their data out of their system and make it compliant with um, submitting this, this notification. Um, the other thing that we did was we didn't want users to have to think a whole lot when they use the system because we never want to make sh we never want to assume that um, you know people are uh, you know GIS users and have the same background that we have. So um, in this particular um, in this particular example, what you can see is the particular activity that's going to happen on the ground. So um, when they go through and they select you know one of these particular activities in this case there's only one highlighted based on the type of data they uploaded but um, if they were to pick for example something that was more appropriate for drawing like a line um, if they pick that activity it would actually present back to them the GIS tools that only allow them to draw a line or if it's some sort of activity um, that's going to happen down on the ground that would um, really need to be mapped as a polygon it would bring up the polygon tool and likewise um, the point based tool. Um, so we, we want to really think about like less complicated tools, you know, think about the end user and not assume that they even understand what a point line or polygon is. We really just want to put the tools in their hands based on the type of activity that they're going to have on the ground. Um, and again, you can see up on the top, we're sort of in the map section of the workflow. Um, 
you know, there are other screens that I won't show, like contacts, conditions, documents, et cetera, but a lot of those things are, are when we get to the mobile part, those are all pieces of information that would come down with this notification um, for the field foresters, but you can see that there's other sort of steps in this, but we're kind of focusing on the GIS for um, this section of it. Um, so you'll see at the bottom there are multiple things that they can do. They can drop a new unit in at this point. Um, they can add new activities, so you see the add activity. They can give this unit a name. Um, again, you'll notice that we're not using these really sort of um, what I would call cryptic icons that, that GIS people are used to using. We're using straight up, you know, English words like draw, edit, erase, and cancel. Um, again, we really want to drive it home for, you know, the fact that this could be, you know, any sort of private landowner who doesn't even really even know what GIS is and make it really, really simple and streamlined for them to use. And that's sort of a goal of this. Um, the other thing to note, which was on the previous screen, there was a little bit of a mention in the in the text for the description, but uh, you can have multiple units uh, that are mapped, so you could have multiple areas down here where things are going to happen, and likewise, you can have multiple activities that happen inside any of these units, so there might be multiple things going on at once um, that would require inspections and um, compliance checking. Um, so at this point, once you get through this, this sort of process, um, you know, what happens is that actually gets now submitted over to Oregon Department of Forestry to review. So um, we, we took an existing, um, in this situation, we're looking at sort of an environmental screening tool. So this was sort, sort of already built inside of Oregon Department of Forestry using desktop GIS where, you know, they would be able to take this shape where something's going to happen on the ground and they would be able to cookie cutter or core through a bunch of data um, uh, that might be sensitive in nature. You can think of it like an environmental screening tool. So what it'll do is it'll say, okay, this is where you're going to do something on the ground. You know, let us let us understand, you know, what what might be of impact that is of concern. Um, and again, this was already built inside the agency, but what we did was sort of webified it or web enabled it. So now it's part of their workflow and they don't have to bounce out to another system and, and report back. So this was a really important um, piece of the project. So at this point, I'm going to bounce it back over to Lena to sort of explain from the, the forester's view sort of what they do and how they manage their work once it's been um, put into the system and it's now in ODF's hands. Thanks, Lou. We've spent a lot of time working with the customer to kind of get that first interface just right to help them easily figure out how to tell us where they were going to operate and what they were going to do. Equally important is providing the tools for the stewardship forester. So every day when they come in, they have a dashboard that they go to. And they review the new notifications that have been submitted. And they take a look at the environmental screening tool to see what type of resource impacts there may be or may not be. And then they prioritize their work for the day. They um, go out in the field and do inspections on these notifications or other activities. So this really leads to taking this application off their desktop and putting it on their iPad so they can access this information while they're in the field. So our stewardship foresters conduct inspections of forest operations before, during, and after to ensure the resource protection laws are being followed. And they used to do this on paper in triplicate, and then they take that back to the office, give a copy to the operator, give one to the landowner, and then enter their information into a database. So today they're doing this all with a mobile application on their iPad, which is fully linked to the e-notification system. Thanks, Lena. Um, so here we have some shots of the, the mobile. So as, as Lena mentioned, the, um, the foresters will check out um, these notifications that happen in their area. So they show up in their dashboard. Um, you know, they use their, their iPads to pull this information down. Um, we'll touch a little bit more on the end of the, the project about some of the, you know, things that were uh, uncovered. But I think the adoption and the use of mobile, uh, you know, ODF really pushed us to do more on mobile and, and, you know, something that we thought they might be resistant to versus paper forms. They really, really latched onto the mobile side of it. And, um, you know, we heard a lot of stories when we were on site working with them about how they used to have to print off like volumes of paper and, you know, have ha, have basically cardboard boxes with a bunch of, you know, folders and everything in it to go out and do these inspections to take all the paperwork with them needed to do all these inspections. And, um, 
you know, it, 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 it really, really uh, changed the way that ODF does business and um, even more so how they interact with these stakeholders and the, the people who are doing the notifications to streamline it so they can get more done on the ground. Um, so they pull down these notifications. Um, you know, some of the things that I had mentioned before about documents and, and all the contact information, um, most of that information, pretty much all of it, comes down with these notifications that they check out um, and, you know, that they navigate to um, down on the ground and looking at those mapped operation units. Um, they, they, they also take some spatial data with them um, down, but um, anybody who's done like mobile GIS mapping, know that's one of the bigger and harder things to, to sort of work out is the, you know, the offline mapping. And, but uh, we feel like we did a pretty good job um, doing that on this project. So once they've, once they've selected a notification, um, you know, as, as Lena mentioned, there's multiple types of inspections that happen, Forest, is pra Forest Practices Act, as well as the fire inspection um, side that has to happen. So, um, you know, once they've selected that, they're able to start it. The other thing of sort of importance, as you can see grayed out in the background there, is um, it also gives them sort of a bird's eye view of all the notifications that are out there. So. Um, they can see if there are multiple notifications that might be submitted by different landowners that might be abutting to one another um, that might force the, the inspection of something because they don't inspect every single one. But if there are adjacency, um, uh, adjacent operations, sometimes by law they're required to, to inspect those certain ones. So this helps them sort of visualize that from a bird's eye view. And, you know, we've done some things with clustering. So you see the, um, the three down there. It's, it's multiple things are happening down there but we don't want to, you know, have a bunch of dots stacked on top of each other. So it's sort of another sort of trick that we pulled off with, with stacking. So these are, again, iPad shots that you can see on here. Um, I think really the, the takeaways from this are that, you know, we have really nice tabbed workflows. So on the left, you'll see the general tab has been selected. On the right, you'll see the, the tools, water, fire, watch, et cetera, um, for this fire inspection. And they, they literally just kind of tab through the forms on the left. Uh, they fill out all the required things. Um, the other thing of note is on the right, you can see the plus and minus. So um, we're trying to minimize the amount of keystrokes that they do. So if we can just have them sort of mash up a plus and mash a minus and increment that thing, that's a lot better. The same with the, the toggle switches. Um, we want to try to to minimize the typing. Uh, on the bottom On the bottom left, you can also see that we've got a comments field there. Um, it does support uh, text-to-type so that they can actually talk into it and um, it'll put in their comments uh, without them actually have to type it, everything in there. Um, the other thing of note um, on this screen is that they can mark things for follow-up inspection. So um, if, if something needs to come back, it'll actually queue up the second inspection. Um, if they find something that's out of compliance, it lets them come back to it. Um, now we're on the Forest Practices Act here, the FPA. So again, it's kind of a similar workflow, a similar look and feel. You've got tabs on the left that help work, help them workflow through. Um, they can associate photos, they can close it out and, um, and, and submit that they've, they've completed this inspection. And again, it's sort of a similar, um, you know, workflow that supports all of those things. So um, just sort of rounding out how things work, you know, we, um, it, it takes it all the way from the notification process, mapping where things are happening on the ground, uh, loading up a forester to have a dashboard, an operational dashboard that lets them look at the things that they're watching, the things that are in their queue and in their work area. It spatially figures out where things are happening. They have the mobile tools that, that give them sort of a bird's eye perspective. They can go in, um, you know, they can look at what's happening on the ground. They can check out those uh, compliance checks that need to be get done. And then they've got the mobile tools to get out there and actually work with the landowners, um, work with the industrial organizations they deal with, have conversations about what's going on, and um, and really, really streamline it, uh, especially looking back in retrospect on how um, things used to work. Um, so now uh, we want to go into Chapter 3, uh, which we just want to spend a couple minutes on you know, talking about the project and how the project was executed, which is really different than what sort of was built. Um, you know, this is for me as as important as what got built and, and sort of how we work together. Um, you know, Oregon Department of Forestry, we would, we would, I think anybody in this organization would put up there as probably our top client, um, you know, in, in terms of ability to work with us and becoming a dedicated product owner and how much time they dedicated to it and really sticking with it 
And I think it, it goes all the way from leadership all the way out to the field foresters and even the external stakeholder partners that were involved in the project. Everybody stayed attached to it. Um, they really embraced this concept of, um, you know, user stories and being able to tell a story in lay terms, put a level of effort on that and say, you know, we want to show progress every couple of weeks and we're going to bite off manageable chunks of work. You know, we're going to estimate those things realistically. We're going to continue to prioritize what we do and focus the work. Um, and we're going to do the highest priority things first and we're not going to worry about the low priority things and we're going to show progress early and show progress often. Um, it, it's not what I would put in the camp of true agile. Not very many people do, you know, what's called pure like agile software development. Um, and the reason I say that mostly is because we, we always like to spend a little bit of time up front doing what we would typically call a sort of a discovery phase and it gets everybody grounded. It gets everybody sort of their, their eyeballs sort of focused on what the finish line looks like, even if there's a, um, a, a loose understanding of exactly what that's going to look like, but it helps us to get that done up front with this upfront scoping. Then what we do is begin prioritizing, building, and testing, and, and really a key to success in how we delivered with Oregon with a lot of clients was, you know, we're showing continuous delivery and we're showing continuous progress. So we don't get in this mode where you're waiting six months to see something. You don't get project fatigue where you get engaged and then you disappear and you work on something else. Like literally, you know, every day the developers are meeting on the project and every every couple of weeks, you know, the client is involved, they're making decisions, they're seeing progress, they're excited and they're engaged. And, you know, it's a lot less risk and a lot, you know, bigger return on investment from our, um, you know, perspective. Um, with that, I'm going to pass it over to Lena um, to close out uh, the rest of the presentation. So chapter four, ODS and the Timmons Group, save the day. So the moral of the story, the outcomes, the results. Um, we started the initial scoping of this project early on in, in 2012. And we had some idea of what we wanted to do. And we were looking around the other states to see what type of technology they were using. We contracted with the Timmons Group in early 2013. And not too soon after, basically October of 2014, we had a successful launch of the first phase. And the interesting thing about that is we basically went from everybody sending us paper one day to the next day, everybody was using the online system. We, we did a pretty hard edge of going from paper to no paper. Um, following that, we did some iterative phases to include our mobile inspections platform and then go back and make some more improvements on the internal staff side, some of the reporting and tracking that needs that we wanted, as well as some improvements on the customer interface. As we went through the years, we kind of learned what worked and what areas we needed to tweak um, to really make this a successful system. And so today, when we look at um, our foresters, and the results that we've achieved, um, really our foresters can spend more time in the field and with better information working with landowners and neighbors. You know, they gained efficiency. They're not spending all their days in the office. Um, we achieve transparency for our customers. Um, they can see all their material on their dashboard. They can see their inspection reports. Um, all their information is basically right there at the touch of their fingertips. So these slides are just compilation of our foresters working with landowners. You can see those iPads are front and center. Our stewardship foresters can't live without them now. And then in closing, kind of our final lessons learned, um, one of our staff people is an artist and he kind of pulled together this piece of artwork at the culmination of the project. And it, it really shows, you know, we, we introduced um, a new technology for our landowners, for our loggers, and um, they have their own set of tools. They have a dashboard. Everything they need is at their fingertips. And if they want to submit a notification, they can do it from their iPad or mobile device. Um, I think one of the biggest lessons that we learned is um, managing change and the expectations of ourselves and our customers was really a lot harder than the actual IT development 
We went into this not really knowing what waterfall or agile was. We're just a bunch of foresters. The Timmons group made it really easy to walk through this process. Overall, the key was was dedicated involvement from our customers, from our different user groups, our staff, and then our contractor, the Timmons Group. And together, we really created a better, more modern system for our use. And I'll turn it back to Lowell for a conclusion. Yep. Thanks, Lena. And, uh, you know, like I said, you know, for us, you know, the biggest the biggest success factor is is a dedicated client like ODF, and we don't we don't always get it. You know, we're lucky enough to have a lot of really really you know good clients, but I think you know Lena's dedication to it, and you know, all the way from the top to the bottom, everybody was bought into it. And you know, the other thing I would say is that um, you know we did this project under a lot of scrutiny. You know, Oregon had some other IT projects that. Um, that didn't go very well and there was a lot of scrutiny from you know the state government looking at IT projects and the things that were going on and um, I would say we came out of it with um, you know uh, a lot of kudos and a lot of um, recognition for for how to run a project and uh, you know it's not just us that can pull that off we got to have the, the state folks and the client you know pulling their weight as well as the you know external people like the industrial folks um, with that, uh, that brings us uh, just about to the end here, and um, I know we've probably, we've got a few questions that have come in already, so um, we'll have Bonnie sort of uh, throw those out, and then Lena and I will just do our best to um, ad address those. Thanks, Lowell. We do have some questions already in the queue, and if anybody would like to add a question, just use the GoToWebinar toolbox on the side of your screen. Um, first question. Can you take inputs from AFF My Land Plan, which is for private landowners? Um, are you? I'm familiar with that a little bit. Um, Lena, are you familiar with that? Yes, I am. And this wasn't specifically set up to record uh, landowners' forest management plans. It's really set up to basically improve the efficiency of how we administer the Forest Practices Act. And so it really focuses on the component of landowners are required to notify us of where they're going to operate. Um, perhaps down the road, we could develop other tools that help us um, track and work with landowners who have forest stewardship plans or forest management plans and embed some tools in there. But at this time, no, we're not linked into the AFF My Land Plan. Yep, thanks. All right, the next question, what would you say were the biggest lessons learned for a project like this? Um, you know, from my perspective, I, I think, um, you know, not going into it with preconceived notions, um, you know, is really important in terms of, like, I, I never would have expected the uh, the adoption of the mobile side and, you know, the, the return on investment that the, the boots on the ground, you know, got out of that and, and how they they really, you know, focused us to spend a lot of time, like, working on that and rounding it out and making it stronger and stronger and stronger in the, you know, second and third iterations of the project is probably, um, you know, a big one, a big one for me. And then, um, you know, obviously, I think this project within our company, at least, it kind of solidified what a good client means and, you know, engaged stakeholders and, and what we call product donors and somebody who can really make a decision to, you know, remove, remove the impediments from the people behind the, the scenes, turning the screws and writing code. Um, you know, that, that really helps projects fly well from my perspective, at least. Thanks, Lowell. Next question, how have the field staff taken to mobile tools and the use of the technology? So this is Lena and I can probably grab that one. Um, you know, before we embarked on this as stewardship foresters, they they didn't use mobile devices. You know, as Lowell described, they'd load up their boxes and their totes with all their paper file folders to go out in the woods. And so when we first embarked on this and introduced a mobile device for them to record their information and, and using all the GIS features, there was some skepticism um, and then also some excitement. And now today, my gosh, if their iPads don't work, you, you, you know, it's crisis mode. They, they want those up and running every day. They can't live without them. Um, the photo piece of this um, has really become invaluable to them. They like, you know, being able to do their inspection 
take a photo, not only of things that might not be in compliance, but take photos of all the really good work that our landowners do out there. And um, again, they, they really caught on and they really embraced the whole mobile technology piece. Thank you, Lena. And how has the industry reacted to the project? So I know lots of uh, apprehension early on, you know, how is this really going to work? Are we, you know, can we really go from submitting paper one day to, you know, all online web-based the next? You know, people were like, will the system break? Can it handle it? Are we going to miss something? Um, so just, you know, a lot of anxiety early on in a project as one can expect. Um, you know, when we're fast forwarding to 2017, 2018, they've really embraced it. They have found uh, the gains in their efficiency for how they do their work and the overall gains in transparency. You know, all their information is available on their dashboard in the system. They too do not have to maintain paper file folders of all this information. Um, we've continually worked with our customers, forest industry, as well as the small family forest landowners to look at uh, continual improvements that improve the tools that they have available. And we continue to make uh, basically some improvements to the system as we go. Overall, very successful. Thank you. Our next question, did timberland owners and industrial landowners participate? And how did you roll this out to them? So I guess I can take a shot at that. So one of the things Lowell mentioned when we were developing the GIS, the mapping tools, um, we spent a lot of time with our larger industrial forest landowners to try to figure out what their needs were. They already had robust mapping systems and, and a whole GIS shop within, within their offices. So we wanted to improve the efficiency and not have them redraw maps of their operational units if they already have that information. So the shape up tool or the ability to import and export shape files became a key component. And we did have multiple meetings where we brought representatives uh, from the larger forest industry groups to meet with the Timmins IT folks and really work on the design of that system. So uh, it went from the simple user stories of, you know, I want to be able to map my unit to some pretty complex uh, discussions on how to make that um, most efficient um, application for those larger landowners. Lowell, Thank do you, you have anything to add? No, I think, um, you know, it, I think you just, it, in terms of being smart about not just dumping something on them and saying, hey, here, go, you know, go forth and be merry with this new thing we decided you needed and you decided we needed and, and we built, um, I think engaging them early and understanding sort of what they needed and, you know, little little simple things like that shape up tool, which lets it get it out of their system easily and into this one, it just goes a long way to be, you know, successful with them. And, um, you know, it was definitely a lot of engagement from all parties and early and often, which is important. So. All right. Thank you, Lowell. We will now conclude our question and answer session. Please feel free to call or email today's presenters with any additional questions. Lowell, do you have any additional comments before we wrap up? Nope. Um, just apologies for having a cold and being a little clunky sounding because of it. But, uh, you know, thanks to Lena and ODF for, for helping out with this. And, um, you know, like Bonnie said, if you have any questions, I've got, you know, Lena's information on the screen there. My information's on the screen. And um, this will be recorded. We're going to post it. I know. Uh, I got emails before we we did it from a few people who knew they wouldn't be on and wanted to make sure we had it recorded. So we'll we'll get it out there, and Bonnie will send a list out to everybody. So, all right, and that concludes our online program. Thank you to our presenters and to all of today's participants. Um, like Lowell said, we will send around the recording. I know it looks like the emails are getting a little cut off at the bottom of the screen there. Um, so we will send around some contact information for everybody. Um, but that concludes our program, and you may now disconnect.